the early settlers and explorers believed in a lost race because they didn't believe that the American Indians, as viewed as a savage culture, would be capable of the sustained effort needed to quarry tons of earth. This is a picture of the Miamiburg Mound. It is 68 feet high. It is 852 feet in circumference. It contains over 20,000 wagon loads of dirt. And this wasn't all. There are over 500 mounds and over 100 earthworks enclosures found in Ross County, Ohio alone. The date of the people who built this mound, as shown on this plaque, is from 1000 BC to 400 AD. Of America's heartland are these giant geometric earthworks in which these mound building cultures constructed huge circles and giant squares which are very symbolic of heaven and earth. These reoccurring designs gives evidence of a centralized government as these ceremonial sites would have been designed by some master architect uh, as they are very similar but are not that close together. Who created the settled places, the agriculture, the urban design, the engineering, and the, and the astronomy that preceded us, preceded we European Americans, are not quite us. They are other people we felt. And in the European American tradition, there's a long, long history of our saying to ourselves, oh, no, no, that's those people. And those people can't be as good as us people. They couldn't build those great big things. Thankfully, today's scientific community is beginning to take a renewed look at what artifacts in ancient cities yet remain, such as these once city walls intentionally preserved as mounds in a golf course in Newark, Ohio. I'm standing here at the parallel walls that connect the gigantic octagon with a large circle. The circle is 1,054 feet in diameter. The octagon encloses 50 acres, which is large enough to encompass four Roman Colosseums. This was built by the ancient Hopewell culture that lived in this region between about 100 BC and AD 400. The level of precision, uh, it, it is incredible. The entire Newark Earthworks encompasses four and a half square miles, and it was the largest complex of geometric earthworks ever built in the world. It includes two circles, a gigantic octagon, a square, but actually what we call the Hopewell culture, uh, things like it at least, and things related to it, uh, covered much of eastern North America in different parts. As far south as Florida, as far east as, uh, as far west as Kansas City, as far east as perhaps New York. They had to be incredibly sophisticated um, to be able to build these mounds perfectly, you know, in unison to an octagon shape and a circular shape. It's clear that they rival by any scale any other cultural achievement in the world, the Great Pyramids, the Great Wall of China, um, the Roman Colosseum. I'm not that surprised by it. Um, there's so many other things that we see when we start learning about and looking into native culture that I think people on the surface may be surprised because they tend to think of Indian people as anti-intellectual or, you know, non-scientific or somehow, you know, living in the backwoods and not knowledgeable about things like that. The knowledge embedded in these earthworks and encoded in their structure is anything but primitive. It's remarkable. You know, it also shows that not just high math, but uh, these sites are lined up primarily with uh, the lunar calendar. They had high math, they understood geometry, and because of the lunar calendar, they also understood the heavens, astronomy. What I've learned now is just how amazing uh, they were in terms of their knowledge of the solar system and of mathematics. And the lunar calendar comes from uh, the Mediterranean. And then they had the unit of, of measurement was 606, which they call the stade. One side of the Great Pyramid from the base to the tip of the apex is 606 feet. 
if you square inside the octagon, which the uh, uh, surveyors like to call, it's a term they use, squaring, squaring the circle, and you divide that up into four equal parts inside of cubes, you'll find those cubes are all made of 606 foot lines per cube side. The angle of the Great Pyramid of Egypt runs 51.8 degrees uh, up the slope from the base to the, to the angle. That, that measurement is there. And when you come off of the, uh, the baseline at uh, Newark and you run true north and then measure that angle back to the baseline, what do we find? 51.8 degrees. So did they have the same math as the ancient Egyptians? Uh, well, i got to say, yeah, it sure looks like it. It's as inspiring, I think, in its way as the, the NASA program to send a man to the moon. Most of the Mediterranean uh, societies, civilizations, ran their calendar on the lunar cycle, or 13-month calendar. And that can be fully demonstrated with the Hopewell people as well. Again, another nice parallel to the uh, Mediterranean contact. And what a special place it is. You, you feel that right away. You feel it immediately when you're there. Um, I was in a kind of strange position because I was on a, a job interview when, I, when they took me to the site and I was literally just from the presence of the place moved to tears and felt kind of uncomfortable a, as a person in a job interview but yet having these strong um, emotional feelings and some connection to this place and uh, the, the history that was there and it just occurred to me how could this be? these early histories of America's heartland, we found it interesting to see how some of these earliest settlers viewed the origin of the Indians. One group was the early Jesuits, who viewed the Indians in a different light than most, for they were seekers of lost 10 tribes, believing that the Native Americans might be of Jewish descent who just needed to be familiarized with their heritage. Reverend John Elliott of Roxy, Massachusetts, in a spirited effort to convert the Algonquin tribe of Indians, made a translation of many parts of the Bible into the Algonquin language. He and Roger Williams were of the branch of Puritans, still cleaving to this view that the Indians were worthy of salvation. William Penn, disposed towards conversion rather than extinction of the Indians, reported that the Indians of Pennsylvania resembled the Jews of London." Unquote. One of the earliest writers to explore these ruins and the origin of the Indian was James Adair, who traded and resided among the Indians for some 40 years, where he was encouraged to write a book in 1775 entitled The History of the American Indians. In it, he stated, as I traded among the Indian Americans, I was forced to believe them descended from the Israelites. This descent I shall endeavor to prove from religious rites, civil and marital customs, funeral ceremonies, manners, language, and traditions. As these early explorers were finding evidence that the early Indian populations were more than just mere savages. Another man who was reaching out to the American Indian found in America's heartland was Joseph Smith. Upon the 1830 publication of the Book of Mormon in Palmyra, New York, Joseph Smith began to reach out to the Indians in a missionary effort. He directed the missionaries to the Cataractus Indians of Buffalo, New York, to the Watnots of Ohio, to the Delaware Indians of Missouri, along with the Fox and the Sac and the Seneca Indians of uh, that region. Joseph Smith, in the same Wentworth letter, which the LDS Church was given the Articles of Faith, Joseph Smith stated, I was also informed concerning the Aboriginal inhabitants of this country and shown who they were and from whence they came. The remnant are the Indians that now inhabit this country. There was one mound construction that would lend credence to this idea 
that some of the Indian tribes may be of Hebrew descent. While visiting Mound City National Park in Ohio, I pulled out this survey map from Squires and Davis's book, The Ancient Monuments of the Mississippi Valley. It was a survey of these, a giant earthwork, which looks like a Hebrew oil lamp and a menorah. And so I asked the park director where we'd have to go to see this particular earthwork. And he says, well, you'd have to get in your car and go down the highway some distance to Milford, Ohio. And at the crossroads there, that is where it was, but no longer it exists because the Army Corps of Engineers came in and wiped it clean. And so I stood and I thought and I said, well, isn't this America's antiquities that we're talking about? I mean, who would come in and make that decision to wipe these earthworks clean? And so I started to ask questions, well, who, who would be in that kind of position? Well, we read that John Wesley Powell was director over mound building exploration and that he was uh, a major in the Army Corps of Engineers because he wanted everybody to call him major because of that relationship. And, and we ask ourselves, well, uh, why? Why and how did this happen? And thus it kind of led us on this adventure of discovery. One of the